As part of the implementation of the World Bank Strategy for Africa, it was adopted in March this year. The World Bank and its sister organizations hosted a conference on the role of the media in development. Joining us now from Lagos on these issues is Obi Izekwesili, who is the World Bank's Vice President for Africa. Obi, it's great to have you. Welcome back to Africa. So tell, talk to us about this issue around uh, the strategy for Africa and why there's a particularly important role that the media can play. Well, thank you very much, Lerato, and it's great to speak with you again. Um, the Africa strategy, as you know, has got a fundamental focus on the jobs agenda, uh, the fact that our number one pillar is uh, diversification and employment. And then the second pillar is, of course, vulnerability and resilience with a foundation of uh, public sector capacity and governance. Mm -hmm. And when you look at these uh, strategy uh, from the perspective of the two pillars and the foundation, you would uh, realize that sound policies are at the heart of being able to achieve mm. any of these. And in articulating sound policies, you require the involvement of many stakeholder mm. voices. And the media is an important platform mm. uh, for the purpose of organizing the sets of thoughts mm. uh, that would determine the choice of policies that would enable Africa achieve the next cycle of growth. Right. Now, Obi, nobody's going to disagree with you and the role of the media as the fourth estate and its oversight role in a democracy. Unfortunately, in Africa, there tends to be a heavy tension between policymakers and the media. It's a very antagonistic relationship and civil society is caught somewhere in between. Are things changing? I think that things are going to uh, change even more. I see early changes. Uh, the, the, the fact is the media is no longer uh, the traditional media operating alone. And so that canvas is now occupied by all actors and all platforms that may not even be subject to restrictions mm -hmm. and the control of the state. Uh, so to that extent, uh, the, the, I think the nation state and the governments are seeing more and more that a relationship that enables constructive engagement is better than an adversarial one. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the real issue is how do you uh, use these uh, possibilities of partnership as a basis for driving Africa's right. next set of uh, important issues and topics for development. Uh, how would the media be at the heart of agenda setting in a way that fosters acceleration of growth right. that has the kind of quality and the kind of benefits that would spread uh, to those who are still outside, mm -hmm. of the, uh, out of, outside of the conference of growth? When the media starts interrogating issues around growth, jobs, healthcare, education, and development. What is it that they can do to mirror the reality that's out there that will then galvanize some kind of social participation? Because the media can be a stepping stone, but ultimately, civil society, the ordinary man and woman, must be in a position to engage the government, the constitution, their policymakers independently. That's a very brilliant point you make. Um, but I think that the first stage is going to be to determine how really strong today's media is in Africa and the content, the quality of the issues that the media focuses uh, attention on. Uh, and that means that we need to begin to think of the level of rigorous analysis of important topics in development, uh, issues in economic reforms or social reforms that, that, the, that the media needs to, to carry forward. Um, that's one level of it. And then, of course, the other level is if the media is able to develop the capacity for evidence-based policy uh, articulation and therefore engender the debate that should happen as a result, mm. what is the strength of the citizens to engage in this? Mm. And you know that the citizens are not just the elite, but also the uh, very uh, rural uh, mm. members of, the, of, of any, uh, every, every country. That means that we would have to think of the media beyond the media that serves uh, the, the population right. that has access to, 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 to media uh, in whatever format mm. you call it. 
Uh, and that means that it's a big agenda. And that's why we're interested in it as development partners of Africa. Now, the World Bank and how you're going to be monitoring this program, because obviously there's a huge emphasis on social accountability. How are you going to track the gains and the efforts that have been undertaken? Well, the, the more that we can see uh, that the voice of the citizens become a part of the process of determining uh, the policy choices, and, and then that we, the more that we can see that voice and participation as a way of uh, public debates on, on issues, so that less of anecdotes form the <laughs> basis upon which policy choices are being made, mm. but that the citizens can be taken even on analytical um, a, a discourse mm. in, in a way that, that speaks to their level of competency of appreciation of those kinds of issues, which may sometimes be right. too esoteric uh, for the average citizen to follow. And yet the voice of the, of the citizens in the whole accountability, mm -hmm. uh, good governance is so key. Yeah. And, and, and the benefit of growth for the citizens is so important. Right. Because Africa's continuing agenda has got to be how to broaden the base of its growth. Okay. And, and, and so for us, the more we see improvement in the interaction between the key stakeholders in any economy, that's a signal of a trend toward progress. Right. Always great chatting with you, Obi Ezekwesili, who's the Vice President for Africa at the World Bank. Enjoy your stay in Lagos.